Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Board of Governors, good evening and welcome to tonight's main event, Dreaming the Possible, a celebration of 90 years. For the last 90 years, the Hebrew University of Jerusalem has influenced the academic and research communities all over the world. Thousands of promising individuals pass through its gates and go on to become experts and professionals in their fields. These people are the great scientific, political, business, and cultural leaders of the future. The Hebrew University has matured, but it is still in its prime, as bold and innovative as ever, which is to be expected from one of the world's finest universities remaining true to its fundamental ideas and inspiring vision. None of this could happen without the most essential component, you. The students, the faculty, the staff members, and all of our dear friends in Israel and around the world. Thanks to you, we can look ahead to our next 90 years of exciting discoveries. Please welcome the Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. Michael Fedelman. Good evening, Erev Tov, Chag Sameach, Good Yontet. Um, I will be very short because we'll have the uh, celebration uh, just after me. Let me only say that to um, fulfill the dream, uh, we ought to continue doing what we have been doing, but to do even more. Uh, the next 90 years are going to be as difficult, if not more difficult than the past ones, and it's up to us to do our utmost and make those uh, 90 years proud of the past 90 years. And uh, based on this very, very uh, exciting, festive, successful Board of Governors, I'm sure that all of you who will be traveling home uh, will do their utmost, and as Barbara said, will maybe influence others to join us to make those next 90 years at least as successful as the past one. Thank you and have a lovely, wonderful evening.
Our story has a beginning, but no end. Long ago, our founders had a dream. They dreamed of establishing a temple of knowledge, the first scientific institution in the holy city of Jerusalem, atop Mount Scopus, the eye of Eretz Israel. A great university that would build a nation through science, culture, and universal ideals. On April 1st, 1925, their dream became a reality as the Hebrew University of Jerusalem opened its gates. Here at the Hebrew University, the most important thing is the creation of knowledge. This is our unique way to make the world a better place and contribute to society. We believe in a multicultural, pluralistic, socially aware community. Our researchers cooperate across disciplines and they achieve remarkable results. The Hebrew University is the leading research university in Israel and aims to become amongst the best in the world. To push the boundaries of innovative research, to make important breakthroughs, to scientifically go where no university has gone before. Possibilities are endless, and they are within our reach, thanks to the scientific dreamers of tomorrow. As tonight's event unfolds, you will hear the story of the Hebrew University from different perspectives, old and new. You will get to know some of the outstanding young researchers who grew up here, they have amazing stories to tell and great achievements to share with us. We also have some very famous visitors with us here tonight. They have come all the way from the past. Perhaps you've heard of them. Albert Einstein, Martin Buber, Sigmund Freud, Chaim Weizmann, the founding fathers of this great establishment. The young generation and the old will have a dialogue that crosses the boundaries of time. Yes, we can actually make that happen here at the Hebrew, at the Hebrew University. It is now my pleasure to welcome Professor Albert Einstein and Dr. Neil Balgil, accompanied by the talented musician Amir Gwiltzman. Professor Albert Einstein, father of the theory of relativity, received the 1921 Nobel Prize in Physics. I am glad that you have me given the opportunity of expressing to you here my deep sense of gratitude as a man as a good European and as a Jew. We are concerned not merely with the technical problem of securing and maintaining peace, but also with the important task of education and enlightenment. Without such freedom, there would have been no Shakespeare, no Goethe, no Newton, no Faraday, no and Dear Professor Einstein, thank you for being such an inspiration to me. When I was a young boy, one time I saw an ad in the paper for a Sanyo video recorder. In the ad appeared a weird looking man with a white mustache and funny hair. He immediately caught my attention, although I did not yet know that this man was actually you, Professor Einstein. My parents told me you're a physicist, and that's when I decided I want to be one too. You always tried so hard to make sense of quantum mechanics. The EPR paper you wrote in 1935 with Podolsky and Rosen said that physical reality, as described by quantum mechanics, 
is incomplete. Well, you'd be happy to know that some of us young researchers, based on your insights, have continued to study quantum mechanics and prove that your construct, which today we refer to as an EPR pair, is actually a reality. What's, what you once thought was impossible is now quite possible. My research concerns the nitrogen vacancy center, which is actually a defect formed in diamond. It can sustain a special quantum superposition state, being at two places at the same time, which gives us enormous processing power, way beyond any modern computer we have today. It will revolutionize our technology. Do you want to know what I've achieved so far? Well, I managed to keep this system stable for an entire second. Only one second, you ask? What's the big deal? Well, five years ago, I managed to maintain it for only one millisecond. That's quite an improvement, don't you think, Professor Einstein? Can you imagine a future when quantum processing will be part of our lives? We will have super fast computers. In the field of medicine, it will allow MRI on the nanoscale. The MRI could be more accurate so that we can see more. It will help us save more human lives. In 1923, Albert Einstein visited Israel and supported the idea of establishing a university here in Jerusalem. He later became a member of the Hebrew University's first board of governors and the first chairman of its academic council. The university was founded long before the establishment of the independent state of Israel. This institution of research and scholarship represents a spiritual bond encompassing the Jews in all countries. You came to Israel because you wanted to support the Jewish state. I admire your respect for Jewish values such as knowledge, generosity, and peace. Like you, Professor Einstein, I also have great hopes for our university. We have so many promising new researchers, professors, and prodigies. I'm an Israeli who grew up here and dreams of taking science a step forward. I believe this dream is possible, even if it takes us a few more milliseconds to fulfill it. Thank you. I'm 
Thank you to the Hebrew University Board, to President Menachem Vega, Ben Song, uh, I'm sorry, uh, and Chairman Mickey Fetterman. I am honored to be here to join in celebrating the 90 years of Hebrew University. I want you to know, though, I am not alone. Four generations of our family have supported and continue to support the work of the Hebrew University. My parents, Molly and David Goodman, my, and my deceased wife, Suzanne's parents, Rose and Irving Crown, together with her uncles, Henry Crown and Dr. Edward Crown, were devoted to Hebrew University as an institution of higher learning, a center for world-class research, and as a beacon of Israel's academic and cultural strength. The family has supported Hebrew University over many years, including a chair in immunology, an endowment in medical research, an endowment for graduate students, and a center for fine arts and musicology. All have received support from our family in memory of loved ones who are committed to the same principles and values and are woven throughout the campuses of Hebrew University. Last year, my daughter Barbara and sons Richard and Leonard joined Margie and me, along with four grandchildren, the fourth generation of our family, in a groundbreaking for the new brain science building. Barbara gave a stunning speech. She stated, we are here today to honor my mother's memory, and our expectations are that the brain science research that comes from the EB University will save the lives of other mothers and other loved ones. My son Richard will, reply, will replace me on the Hebrew University Board. You can be assured that he will continue the family tradition of support that has gone from generation to generation. I have every expectation that it will be passed on again through my grandchildren to ensure that this great institution not only endures, that continues to thrive as an example of Israel's strength and value to the world. Thank you. Martin Luther a renowned Jewish philosopher, thinker, and educator. He is best known for his dialogical approach, as expressed in his 1923 book, I and Thou, which distinguishes between I, Thou, and I, It, modes of existence. Bein ha'ani 
ובני האתה, ובלבד שיפרנס את היהירות הריקנית הקטנה. Dear Mr. Buber, Growing up on a kibbutz in Israel, I remember reading your text for the first time. They discussed an I-thou relationship of mutuality and empathy towards the other. Your ideas had a great impact on me, as well as on the kibbutz movement in its early years. Later, I became a researcher in sociology and international relations at the Hebrew University. I study the strangers among us from a sociological perspective and focus on the ongoing dialogue between immigrant communities and the local society. Surely you would have identified with the values that guide my work on the identity of immigrant and refugee communities, such as Latin American and Ethiopian immigrants to Israel, in their constant effort to reconcile their past with their present lives, far from their homeland roots, desperately trying to fit in. One such major work I have done was an ethnography on the changing identity of the South Lebanese army, Sadal, in Israel. A community who has not yet been studied. The SLA Lebanese fighters who fled from Lebanon to Israel in the year 2000 are rejected both by the Jews and the Arabs. They live on the margins of Israeli society, trying to define their conflicted identity and loyalties in relation to multiple centers of belonging, Lebanon, Israel with its diverse subcultures, as well as the Lebanese Christian diaspora worldwide. I hope this research can help us in turning the spotlight on the strangers among us, minority communities and their daily hardships in the margins of society, and contribute to the building of a more just and equal society where every human being can reach his or her full potential, regardless of religion, race, or gender. In this, I share the same values you believed in, open dialogue, truthful interpersonal communication, and equality. Buddha was an important scholar of Judaism and the Hasidic movement, as well as a cultural Zionist who promoted Jewish cultural renewal. He supported the establishment of higher education centers in Israel and chaired the first department of sociology at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in its first years. <laughs> שבני אדם מגלים עצמם זה לזה כפי שהינם בישותם. אם מן הצורך שאחד יאמר לקרבו כל מה שעולה על ליבו, אלא זה בלבד ובעיקר שהאחד לא ייתן לשום תדמית להשחיל you would have probably been proud, Professor Buber, seeing the Hebrew University today. I wish for all of us many years of growth, scientific development, cutting-edge research, and innovative new ideas. Following your Buberian dialogical spirit, I hope that we will continue to be loyal to scientific integrity while sharing our ideas openly with our colleagues and the society around us. And no less important, I wish for us to be the best scholars and human beings we possibly can. I believe we have at least 90 more good years to do so. We see humanity evolving and improving thanks to our research. 
we dream of seeing all of this come true, and it will. Please welcome, once again, the choral ensemble with the song, Someday I'll Have It, ODA. Words, Rachel Shapira. Music, Yaroslav Yakubovich. Sigmund Freud dedicated his life to the study of the human mind. He was the father of psychoanalysis and revolutionized the way we understand ourselves. I started my professional activity as a neurologist trying to bring relief to my neurotic Dr. Ayanet Landau. Dear Dr. Freud, your inquiries into neurosis and the formulation of psychoanalysis place the discussion about what is aware and what is not aware at the forefront. Your attempts to uncover 
the unconscious inspired a multidisciplinary path of inquiry that ranges from religious studies to literary critic all the way to biological mechanisms. My research, too, is concerned with processes that occur between our environments and our perceptions. When I first learned about people who suffer stroke and as a result find themselves unaware of half their visual field, I realized that perception is far more than what reaches our senses. That energy that reaches our eyes, our ears, the tips of our fingers, all that is just a small portion of the brain processes that actually produce our perception. And that the influence of an older friend and by my own efforts, I discovered some important new facts about the unconscious in psychic life, the role of instinctual urges, and so on. Out of these findings grew a new science, psychoanalysis, a part of psychology, and a new method of treatment of the neurosis. You, Dr. Freud, drew our attention to the fact that we are unaware of much of our psychic life. You are right, unconscious processes don't only influence us, as you propose. Our experience of the world around us is determined by processes that are largely unconscious. And of course, inquiring about processes that are not conscious, that do not reach our awareness, comes with great challenges, as I'm sure that you too experience. I continuously work to find ways to shed light on biological mechanisms as they relate to cognition and perception. You try to shed light on suppressed mechanisms that bring about disorder. When I study healthy people and try to understand how they perceive the world, I too hope that the knowledge we acquire will help understand disorders and design, importantly, more effective interventions. Sigmund Freud was among the founders of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and sat on its first executive board. His theories of psychoanalysis were embraced by leading members of the academic circles in Israel. I had to pay heavily for this bit of good luck. Did not believe in my facts and thought my theories unsavory. Resistance was strong and unrelenting. In the end, I succeeded in acquiring new things and building up an international. Psychoanalytic association. But the struggle is not yet over. We all have to strike a balance between advancing existing theories while at the same time challenging them for the sake of the evolution of knowledge and ideas. I think my life as a scholar in the field of psychology is quite a bit easier than what your life was like. In my lab, I inquire about the brain, the underlying science of our perception, how we pay attention, how we become aware of our environment and of the passage of time. I came back to Jerusalem after 10 years of training and research abroad to do so. The Hebrew University, you see, is synonymous with innovation. As a young faculty member, I place a strong emphasis on telling the next exciting story and communicating it within my discipline and beyond it. I believe that the near future holds major breakthroughs in this area. The science of the unconscious, which both you and I are fascinated by, remains an active, provocative, and exciting frontier. Thank you.
Dr. Landau and Dr. Ford. Well, by now we've met Einstein, Huber, and Floyd, and I just saw Chaim Weizmann getting ready backstage. But before that, I'm honored to invite the president of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Professor Menachem Ben Sisson. We should dream our future, future. Otherwise, what shall we do in the present? So for the short term, we got an answer to this evening. Each and every scholar that we met is a young faculty. According to the tradition that we keep telling you, this is the future of the Hebrew University. Yes, this is the future of the state of Israel. It is the future of science, as those founders were the future of that time, and we are proud having them as past. In the near future, we want to make sure that our substantial needs are met. We have to do the upkeeping of the labs, we have to make the buildings are built. It's important. It's short term, but if we do not write it into more morning's work, who's going to do it? In the short term, we must solve the problem of the previous generations, the pensions. It's very mundane, but crucial for our life in the near future. But all those are actually servants ushers part of our real dream. Our real dream for the future is to have few big spaces and we have to build them. Budgetary space, essential, it's a tool, but if, you, if we do not build it, how can you move ahead? Human resources space, Human resources space is needed in order to have enough of faculty, enough of administrative staff, great, like we have nowadays. We have to have huge space in this time in order to make sure that in the future we can build what we wanted and we have to make it if we use Einstein terms the space is important, but time counts in a shortage time that one can make. In order to do so, we maintain dialogues, like the ones that we saw this evening. May professors to students, not just students. As the rector mentioned today, the best students from Israel and abroad. Yes, we made a space, we had a budget, we don't have time, we want to, to use this space and we are going to have it. We want to maintain the real dialogue between ourselves and the world. That's the dialogue of scientists. We have to make a dialogue between ourselves and the next generations as we did just now, between the, three, the previous generations and our days. This dialogue is critical, is critical, is crucial, Otherwise, how can one build a dream? And another dialogue we must maintain. Deepen, develop, invest in. This is the dialogue between the disciplines. We saw this morning how crucial is the dialogue between different departments of humanities and between the humanities and other topics. It doesn't come without an effort. It does, it does not come without huge investment. But the dream of the future says that in experimental sciences, humanities, the arts, medicine, go hand in hand without giving up the exclusivity of each of the departments of knowledge that are not superficial. We develop the future on the basis of deepening the present and understanding the past. 
And from time to time, when dreaming, we know, as we did in the humanities, that activities, developments, are going top down. You have to come with a plan and to try to bring all together to build it. But plans are going many times bottom up, as we saw this evening, with such a faculty such a new faculty, who would dare of thinking that we have to dream? They already dreamt. So the future is here already, as you saw, as the past is here. And the dialogue between the two is elementary for dreaming, because what we dream at night is what we saw during the day, but without making the space both the mundane and the, and, and the social, without building the dialogues that we have to build, we cannot envision any future and secure any present. Without thinking of tomorrow, today hasn't got any relevancy. That's the way a university must think. Hein Weizmann, a scientist, statesman, and outstanding figure amongst the Zionist leaders. On February 16, 1949, he was elected Israel's first president. <laughs> Professor Amir Ahmedi. Take, for example, our, our eye cake, and it has got 
mechanical device for the blind that sends digital information in the form uh, of vibration so that any blind, even deaf blind person using it, can detect and avoid obstacles with absolute ease. And it only takes five minutes to learn how to use it. But let's not stop here. Our latest project is the iMusic, a tiny video camera that converts visuals into sounds and music, just like the one we're playing now, using new sensory language I developed. Many visually impaired individuals have tried it and they could actually read the alphabet, see pictures, and even uh, manage to locate and, uh, and recognize objects and individuals in their surroundings. Yes, it is possible to send visual information in the form of music, sound, touch. But my vision goes far beyond this. My bright Hebrew University students, my US and European collaborators, and I are working side by side to create special classes that will use music, touch, together with an electronic chip that is implanted in the eyes. These classes can give blind people the ability to see and to experience the world in the closest way to full vision. Highlights of the world that the future part of the Zionist group was the establishment of a scientific institution in Jerusalem. On July 24th, 1918, he helped lay the cornerstone of the Hebrew University. And on April 1st, 1925, spoke at the official opening ceremony of the university. Dr. Weizmann kept a picture from this historic event over his bed at home and always spoke with pride and enthusiasm about the future of the Jewish nation. Dr. Weizmann, you always saw the importance of building a university here in Jerusalem. You know, and you knew uh, it would be a huge challenge, but with persistence, with faith, anything can be achieved. It's true, science presents us with huge challenges, but you already saw that happening well before I was born. You saw the future, and I promise you that my fellow researchers and I will do our best to ensure your vision will always stay alive.
Good night.